This here video is about some sort of disc whip, but first you should listen to the fellow who invented it and pay attention like your future depends on it, because it does. My name is Paul Marostica. I'm the inventor of the unifying physics theory, matter theory, which unifies our understanding of everything we can observe into the only possible physically and mathematically logical theory of everything we can observe. Matter theory so simply and logically explains what we observe, and only what we observe, it makes all other physics theories, including quantum theory and relativity theory, obsolete. After you've learned matter theory, not only will you simply and logically understand the fundamentals of physics, you will simply and logically understand exactly what, in any other physics theory, is incorrect and why it is incorrect. Matter theory is surprisingly easy to learn, and it is the only physics theory anyone should learn. Learn any other physics theory and you will be learning illogic. But enough about matter theory. I'm now going to introduce you to a completely different recent invention of mine, the disc whip. And I'm going to do it using a fictitious, hopefully entertaining story. It began almost like a dream. It was starting to get dark one night. It's starting to get dark. I think this will be my last hole tonight. That was a good drive. My disc should be parked near the basket. I, um, I, uh, I think it's time to have a look at the view from the big rock. Bum 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 bum. What is going on? What kind of siren is that? I'm getting my disc and getting out of here. That's not my disc. Tombstone. No markings. That's really in there good. There's my disc. Covered with dirt. Huh. I'm finishing this and getting out of here. Birdie! What a strange night. At least the sirens have stopped now. Why don't you hang up here until I can get you returned? Some sort of disc. I don't even like that. It reminds me of the moon. This disc. It's not constructed of any material I recognize.
I've just had an idea for a disc whip. Well, little buddy, I reckon this ain't going to be a good night for you. Now, why'd I do that? What is that doing there? Oh, I get it. Disc whip. Someone's being clever. I think. Just in case, I'm going to move you somewhere else until I can get you returned. A disc whip will be a device intended for use in flinging golf discs and flying rings farther than we can throw them. What's a golf disc? I don't know. What's a flying ring? I don't know. Why are you asking me? The last I heard, some kind of flying ring was one of the farthest human thrown objects. And golf discs used in playing disc golf are routinely also thrown very far. What's disc golf? This is disc golf. I mean, uh, this is disc golf. Huh, you're just no good. Let me try. Watch this. There. See? I cannot miss. I love this game. That's real nice. Now watch me. I got me some skills that are, what you call, transferable. or left me putting boomerang back in Australia. Thank you all for your help. I was trying to lead up to explaining why a disc whip could be a useful device for flinging golf discs and flying rings. Because a flying ring is one of the farthest human thrown objects, flinging a flying ring farther could be a noteworthy human achievement. As for disc golf, it's not all putting like we've just seen. Disc golfers sometimes have competitions for the farthest throw. Why? In disc golf, each basket has its own tee, the place you start throwing from. Let's backtrack from this basket to its tee. The disc whip is intended for use in flinging golf discs and flying rings these distances. Sacre bleu. Eh, eh. I mean, eh, uh, eh, uh, crikey. About a week later. I've been considering many different possible ideas for the disc whip. Oh, and it's been about a week now, and no one's claimed that unmarked white disc, so until someone does, I guess it'll be mine. Well, it took some time, but I found you. It seems I misunderstood. A disc whip is going to be a brand new invention for flinging discs and rings and such. Speaking of brand new, you ain't branded, is you? 
I can fix that. This ought to make for a fine brand. Once you're branded, I'll put you back where I found you. Now it's time to go. A few days later, I've been thinking and I've now got two ideas about how we can throw farther that we can apply to trying to fling farther than we can throw. I've played disc golf with many different people and I've observed that people with longer arms and people with stronger arms tend to be able to throw discs farther. Throwing discs farther results from throwing discs faster. There are reasons in physics why people with longer arms and people with stronger arms tend to be able to throw discs faster. Let's assume that while standing I'm going to throw this flying ring. I reach back to a start position and then I begin to pull on the flying ring in a straight line in the direction I want the flying ring to go. I pull continuously on the flying ring, continuously increasing its speed, pulling, increasing its speed, pulling, increasing its speed, until I open my hand at a release position from which the flying ring continues moving with the speed I imparted to it. In my throw, I applied a force over a distance to impart a speed to the flying ring. The force is the pull. The greater the pull, the greater the force. I began pulling from a start position in a straight line to a release position. So the distance over which I applied the force is the distance from the start position to the release position. If I repeat the same throw, applying the same force, over the same distance, then each time I will impart to the flying ring the same speed. If I had arms that were longer but not stronger, I would reach to a start position that was farther backward and pull to a release position that was farther frontward, applying the same force but over a greater distance so the flying ring could have the same acceleration but for a greater time, resulting in my imparting to it a greater speed. If I had arms that were stronger but not longer, I would be applying force over the same distance, but that force would be greater, so the flying ring would have a greater acceleration everywhere along that same distance, resulting in my imparting to it a greater speed. So, if you really want to throw farther, here are two simple things you can do. Start farther backward and release farther frontward, so you can apply your force for a greater time and strengthen your body so the force you can apply is greater. When we throw a golf disc or flying ring, we torque it to cause it to spin. We do not throw like this, we throw like this. A spinning disc or ring is more resistant to tumbling, so it flies farther and more predictably. Now I want to apply my ideas for throwing farther, to a device we can use to fling farther than we can throw. After some thinking, I settled on the idea that I wanted to invent a device that would support, propel, and spin a golf disc or flying ring while I swung the device like a baseball bat. In this way, the golf disc or flying ring will have a start position that is farther backward and a release position that is farther frontward and I will be able to force with the strength of both of my arms instead of just one of my arms. After some more thinking, I determined a theory of the device. The device could be a beam swung by one end, the handle, having a platform attached to the other end. The platform could support a golf disc or flying ring while it was being forced and torqued by the swinging beam. I made a drawing of a prototype of the device that could be constructed from wood, nails, screws and glue. Thanks for viewing. Don't miss the next video in the Disc Whip Flinger video series.